The most recent facility that I have worked, that I've been working at pre-COVID, I'm still waiting to go back, all they allowed is a ballpoint pen. And it's, it's just, you know, it's a low security prison, uh, county jail. And they w don't even let me have colored pencils in the art room. Um, so it has nothing to do with logic <laughs> or reasonability. It just, just there are a lot of people in the business who don't think that inmates should have the opportunity to make art. I very often have heard people say, especially uh, correctional officers saying, that these people should not be getting free art lessons or learn how to play the guitar. They're criminals. They need to be punished. The men's prison that I went to first was in Lexington, Oklahoma. The warden, that was the first warden I ever met, his name was Jack Cowley. What he said to me was, I see the changes in a man when he makes art. He thinks, well, I've done something wonderful. And he starts wanting to look nice. And he says, good morning to people. And I was walking, I was walking into his office one day. He was on the phone with another warden. And they were, the other warden was asking him about an inmate that they both knew. And so, so Jack was saying, listen, Sam, it's very simple. Put a paintbrush in the man's hand. And to me that, you know, that tells the whole story. It brings tears to my eyes. It's, it's, uh, it's so beautiful. The idea of not speaking personally took, all, took away all the possibility of I can't draw, I can draw, my grandma can draw, uh, I want to learn to draw this but I can't do that. When, when that was not spoken aloud, it didn't, it didn't come through, it doesn't work. You have to keep saying those things out loud for, for you to buy into them. That was the first thing. The second thing, Uli, is that no expression of negativity. Now, I wasn't talking about the art, I was talking about their behavior in the art room. And that included slumping in your chair and yawning, let alone, I can't do this or I can't do that, because that's a double whammy. It's personal and negative. And um, so that the obedience was staggering. They, all, they always did every, everything I asked for. The, um, the doodling is amazing, and I, I've used that even for non-incarcerated people. If you doodle according to my instructions, you're not gonna come up with anything you've seen before or thought about or um, something that you're trying, trying to do because you have some concept or idea. Over these years, most, most of the artists here left their work behind. 
they didn't value it. And also, if getting out of prison after you've been in for years and years and years, I've seen many people who have no place to go, and they're getting out next week. And they are, they're, just the stress is unbelievable. You can see it. So many people just left the work behind. They had more, what, what are they gonna do with big paintings when they don't even have any place to live? So once somebody gets uncorked, I'm not, I'm not teaching them anything. You know, I might say, put your paint over here so you don't knock it over. But it's just practical things. And, and I'll be emphasizing the rules if someone gets too conversational or, you know, is not obeying the rules of the class. But what, what I feel when I say, don't speak personally, that does the trick. It's, in, it, it's pretty, pretty amazing. I'm not going around saying do this or do that or fix this or fix that. The only thing I've ever said was, it isn't finished. And I didn't say how to finish it. You know, a lot of people that are insecure, they're just, they don't want to stay, they don't want to hang in there with it. And this one man, I won't forget him, he was doing a landscape, a, a fantasy landscape, and brought it, and I said, it's not finished. Working it some more. He brought it back another week. I said, it, it, it is not finished. He, he didn't argue with me. And he brought it back, and the, the third, the second time he brought it back, he wept. He held this drawing in his hand, and he said, I can't believe I did this. And he wept. I've seen very much unjust, horrible things happen. In 40 years in high security prisons, I've seen heartbreaking things happen. But I had to decide early on I was not going to be an activist. If I engaged in activism, they won't, wouldn't let me in. So I always say, yes, sir, yes, sir. I'm completely obedient so that I get to, I get to stay there. And um, sometimes this is what I'll read to them. He's talking about music, Leonard Bernstein, but he says, this will be our reply to violence, to make music more intensely, more beautifully, more devotedly than ever before. This is, this is our response to violence. And then John F. Kennedy, he's speaking about poetry, but it's the same thing. When power leads man toward arrogance, poetry reminds him of his limitations. When power narrows the areas of man's concern, poetry reminds him of the richness and diversity of his existence. When power corrupts, poetry cleanses for art establishes the basic human truths 
which must serve as the touchstone of our judgment. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you.